So I recently picked up a MacBook Air M1 with a new processor. And of course, uh, if you don't know this already, it only has two Thunderbolt ports. And I have a number of devices I use when I'm working with video and video conferencing. So I needed some more ports. I was looking for a solution. One company, uh, OWC, Otherworld Computing, uh, at maxsales.com, I think is their uh, web address. Um, they uh, had a product uh, that was announced in, I think, October uh, that was a one port in, three port out solution, which I ordered. Uh, and unfortunately, it was back ordered or hadn't, wasn't shipping. So it uh, turns out this device, a little more expensive, but a little more capable, became available just recently. And I ordered one uh, because I wanted to get one in uh, and test it out and probably keep it. Uh, so this, uh, this is the OWC Thunderbolt dock. It has three Thunderbolt 4 ports, uh, and uh, which for Mac users, it's our Thunderbolt 3, their equivalent. It has Ethernet, audio, uh, it has a card reader, um, and a number of other functions. But I wanted to test out how well the Thunderbolt worked. <laughs> So I thought I'd stop here and give you a quick, too long, didn't read version of this. Um, it's a great little device. I was able to test it with my MacBook, uh, MacBook Air M1. And uh, the findings are this. I used three different disk drives, uh, tested them on my MacBook, my 2018 MacBook Pro 15 inch, and got speeds of 475 to 500-ish on the uh, standard uh, things like Samsung T5, uh, SanDisk, um, Extreme. The Extreme Pro almost doubled that, 940-ish both read and write on the uh, MacBook Pro 8 uh, old one, the Intel. Uh, on the Air, they slowed down a fair amount. Uh, we're looking at 390, 380 to 390-ish on the SanDisk, a little bit slower on the Samsung, and the Extreme was 850 uh, on the write speed, and actually the read speed was slower at 790. So again, they could vary some, but slower, uh, usable, but slower. Um, the OWC dock brought the numbers up on the uh, kind of conventional drives, the, the Sand, SanDisk Extreme and the T5, uh, brought them up uh, a fair amount over the M1, uh, probably in the 440 range, 450 range for each, uh, a little higher on the read speed for the SanDisk, a little bit lower on the Samsung, and it had this ramping effect where, and again, I'm running Blackmagic speed tests, so um, better. Um, the SanDisk Extreme Pro, however, was slower than directly into the M1. So the, the dock doesn't improve speeds for these faster, at least the SanDisk version of this faster drive, which was faster on the Intel, slower on the uh, Air, uh, and even a little bit slower through the dock. So I still think it's a really nice uh, accessory. Uh, I'm going to keep it. I'm going to definitely use it because I need the more ports. So um, that's the too long, didn't read. I'll post, I'll show you the, uh, uh, the table I put together or you can watch the rest of the testing. Thanks. So real quick uh, unboxing here. I haven't unboxed this, so uh, it's got there nice plastic. Uh, here's the dock, fairly hefty. Um, has, uh, looks pretty nice. Take a quick look inside the box. Uh, underneath, we've got uh, good stuff there paperwork and a cable. I think this is um, this is a USB-C cable. I've got a power supply, which I'm sure will be fun to hook up. I've got enough other stuff uh, lighting on. Um, and uh, power supply for that. And we've got a power cord. And that is pretty much it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play with this a little bit and then I'm going to come back and give you some first impressions of it. I don't normally do reviews, but I have a feeling since I was looking for information on this, maybe some other folks are as well. 
Okay, for our first test, we're going to do a SanDisk Extreme Pro 1 terabyte drive. And this is on the um, MacBook Pro 15 inch 2018 edition. All right, so here we go. We'll let it go a couple of cycles until it gives me all the, uh, gives you kind of a rough feel for things. We don't need to belabor this too much. It's just to give you an idea. So let's, we'll watch a little bit more. We'll let it go three cycles each one, I think, just for the heck of it. You can fast forward through this if it doesn't work for you. You can get a rough idea. Okay. So we're going to stop the speed test at this point, and I'm going to keep things going here. Uh, so we're going to eject that drive and go through all that good stuff really quickly. So hang in there for a second. Get this off of your screen here. Maybe we'll edit a little bit of this out. Okay, so now we're going to test the Samsung T5. I had a little challenge user error, but uh, let's see what kinds of speeds we get out of it. You would think it'd be fairly comparable to the SanDisk, but we'll see. Now I'm not going to address um, some of the things of what happens as the drive warms up. Uh, I've, I've seen a couple of videos that talk about um, as you do some pretty intensive um, reading and writing from it, say you're doing some 8K video or something along those lines that you could run into some problems. I'm going to leave that alone for this for this purpose. But you get the idea here. We're looking at 480-ish and a little over 500 for the write and read speeds. And again, we'll let it go through three cycles. Again, this is with the MacBook Pro 2018 edition and Intel edition. Uh, and... Um, this gives you kind of a rough idea of what the, the, the speed of this type of drive using the Thunderbolt ports on that machine look like. So that should uh, take care of that. Let's go ahead and uh, let's move on to a, the SanDisk Extreme Pro, which is, I think, similar to the T7 drive that's out from Samsung, I don't own one of those. So let's see what kind of speeds we get with that. So as expected, not quite double the speed, but close to double the speed so far. Um, so one of the reasons you, you consider those drives is that faster speed, and they're more expensive, of course. Okay, now we're going to take a look at the uh, MacBook Air's disk speeds. So uh, what we've done is we have, um, we're plugging into the uh, Thunderbolt port, and we're going to start with a test of the SanDisk Extreme. And you'll notice here it seems to be a, a, a good bit slower than the Intel Mac, but we're going to let it go a couple of cycles and see what it looks like. So again, this is a little bit slower than we would have expected with the uh, Intel Mac for this particular drive. And we'll, we'll put together a little comparison of all of this later. But this is just to give you a baseline for when we hook it up to the OWC Thunderbolt dock. Okay, so now we're going to set up and use the... Um, the Samsung T5 drive that uh, we want to compare its speed here and see what it sound what it performs like uh, again using the MacBook Air. 
All right, let's take a look. So this is the Samsung drive. And it seems to, um, we'll give it a few cycles. It uh, seems like it's uh, taking a little time to get its speed up. I, I think, well, let's just look. So it's quite a bit slower. And again, this is through the native, uh, the onboard Thunderbolt port of the MacBook Air M1. And it's gaining speed as it goes along, so that's a little different behavior from what we saw from the SanDisk. And it's looking about 350-ish um, with a slower start, but let's handicap that a little bit and just say 350, 370 looks looks about right. So now we're going to move to the uh, SanDisk uh, Extreme Pro, which is similar to the T7 drive uh, that uh, you can get from Samsung. And we'll see if uh, how it performs again in uh, using the uh, direct port from the uh, MacBook Air. So here, not as fast as the Intel Mac. The Intel Mac was up in the well up into the 900s, and here we're looking at the mid 800s and around the high 700s. So a little bit slower uh, using the Thunderbolt bus that's built into the M1. And I've heard, uh, I've seen videos that indicate that that's. Not an unexpected behavior based on other people's testing, but again, your mileage may vary. Okay, so uh, here we have the dock. Um, it has OWC on it. It's upside down for you, but uh, I've got it hooked up into my uh, ATEM Mini so that I can uh, play with the cameras a little bit, and it just feeds my system. This is power in, um, and then you've got... Um, uh, a connection to the, uh, actually this is the connection to the ATEM Mini and this is the connection to the computer. So let's plug in some of these drives and see what we get. I did get a an odd behavior. I, I ran an earlier test here and I found that one of the drives all of a sudden was a quite, I mean, ridiculously slow. Uh, I wound up re rebooting this by turning the, pulling the power cord and putting it back in. That seemed to correct the problem, but it's something I want to try to figure out. So let's put in the uh, SanDisk uh, Extreme, and let's put it in as our target drive, and let's see what kind of speeds we get. Uh, here we go. Just a little bit out of frame here, and let's see what happens. All right. So this is what we saw, um, pretty good speeds, uh, better speeds than directly out of the bus uh, on the, or directly out of the Thunderbolt port. Um, as I recall, I'll have to go back and take a look, but I think it's a, a fair amount, you know, maybe a hundred megabits per second uh, faster. So kind of nice, we'll let it go. Um, one of the things I noticed for whatever reason in the Samsung drive is it takes a few cycles for it to get back to get, get it to speed up. Um, and I don't, I'm not super familiar with the disk speed test and what, you know, and whether or not, um, I'm, I'm reading too much in, into it, but it seems like the sand disk drive that I have is a, the two that I have ramp up a little faster, but this one's looking really pretty good. I'd be very happy with this kind of speed. So we're going to stop that. We're going to, um, eject the drive and we'll put another one in. I'm deliberately just using one port for now. We'll uh, go back, and I'm going to plug all three of them in in a minute to see what happens with that. So now it's uh, SanDisk's turn, and here's SanDisk. And let's try putting that in there, see what happens. There we go. By the way, I haven't read the manual yet, so it's another... Uh, get the online manual and figure out if I'm missing something here. So let's uh, select this as my target drive again, and let's see what happens. 
um, better than last time. This was in the 20s last time, and that, I think, was due to some, some glitch with the uh, switching of the drives. But that's something to watch out for. Um, again, these look good, but not at the level um, of the uh, SanDisk. But let's let it run a few cycles and see. I think it'll might pick it pick it up to be close to the same speed. So I'm not sure what that behavior is about and whether it's relevant. Um, looks looks like it's going to be at similar speeds by the time it and maybe even a little faster by the time it gets done. So we'll give it three cycles and uh, see what that looks like. Okay, so again, I'm not extensively testing this, um, so it's a little less than scientific, but I wanted to give you a feel for what m might be possible with this. And of course, there's a lot of other, um, a lot of other things you can do. We'll take that off. And now we're going to put the Extreme Pro Intergalactic Premium Drive here. Okay, so let's take a look at what it can do. Let's go back and change our target drive to it. And we zero it all out and let's see what we get. Now here, it's interesting, um, not as much of a difference between uh, this, uh, at least in the beginning here. Let's see where it winds up but after th three cycles. But it seems that the doubling that you got when we use the Intel Thunderbolt and upward of, um, you know, pushing um, 950-ish and then um, just straight into the Thunderbolt connection on the uh, M1 was in the 800s, uh, well into the 800s. So this seems a little slower for this particular, this, you know, the this class of drive. I, I'd love to have a T7 to test it against, but I don't, so um, the T7 might do better. Uh, it's a similar uh, performance drive to this uh, Extreme Pro. So uh, again, a little bit of a shortfall there, um, not quite the double speed or even close to the double speed that you would kind of hope for uh, relative uh, to it, so that might determine my purchasing in the, in the near term.